everyone, Eugene here. Hope you're all well. Joined by my good friend Christo for a review of Rosna Cree du Desert, part of the um, Desserts de Orient. It came out in 2012. Familiar with this perfume? Oh yeah. Marketed towards the Middle East. Um, to me, really, it's the least of the Middle East inspired perfumes. When I first tried this two years ago, I would have agreed. And to me, it was very dry, woody, spicy, very Middle Eastern, um, very on par with some of the reviews that are on Fragrantica. I'm not sure if my nose has changed at all. I'm sure it has, because two years later, um, I'm smelling this and it's very different from what I remember. Um, oud, oud's a listed note. It's rose, patchouli, balsamic, you know, spicy. Yeah, what I, do you think? To me, the big players in this are uh, rose, patchouli, and then spices. Um, in terms of base, there is some like dry woods and whatnot, but for the most part, I see this as more of a rose, patchouli, spicy. Beautiful bottles. Beautiful. Stunning. I love those. That The cap with the double Guerlain G's. I think it looks amazing. With the, the gold dust raining down. Yeah, and the... The, all the bottles are uniform the in the uh, desserts everything. collection. Beautiful. Some Arabic script on the other side. Guerlain logo on the front. Comes in this velvety packaging. Atomizer here. A little bit of literature. Um, when I spray this on, I get a ton of patchouli. It's very sour. Uh, it's spicy. I get some saffron. Earthy. And a lot of rose. Yeah. I'm not sure about you, but I'd almost say it's a rose solo floor. I don't really get any other florals. Um, yeah. Rose is a, a dominant note here. Yeah, I don't know if I quite go that far, but I do think rose, for the most part, is a very dominant note. I do think it is the only floral, if not the only major floral in it. Yeah. To me, it's a very wet rose. Yes. That's like, you mentioned like how couple years ago you would have thought it wasn't or you thought it was very Middle Eastern and now you don't. Thing is for me you're much more seasoned with these than I am. Uh, the whole series there's three. There's this, there's Sange du Bois d'Ate and then there's Ensemble Mythique and we were actually just kind of talking about this uh, on our way home from the Guerlain sale and uh, I think all three of them both have very Middle Eastern elements but then also have very un-Middle Eastern-like elements. Yeah, I find Sange to be the most Middle Eastern inspired, and, and this one the least. I remember it being bone dry, because I remember picturing bone in my head, and now it's it's completely different. There's some greenness in here. I pick up some fruit notes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the rose, it's a very full rose. I smell one rose. I don't smell a garden of roses. I smell a very powerful spice in the opening, which I believe is saffron. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I just quite recently have been starting to pick up the, uh, the massive amounts of spice, kind of wearing it in anticipation for the Guerlain sale, because this has been, like, on my to-buy list for about a year, basically since you took me to the boutique last year, and I've been wearing it a lot, and like, wow, there's so much more spice in this than I remember. Yep. That's right. The first time I wore it, I was actually... I, I thought this is way too luxurious for me, and I can't imagine wearing this on a regular basis. Now, when we went back, I kind of like rediscovered it and thought, okay, this isn't so bad. I, you know, I can wear this. I now wear it to work occasionally. You know, I'll wear it around the house, and uh, it it just seems different to me. And it doesn't really match up with a lot of the reviews I'll read on for Grantica. Ood. I don't get any ood from this. Like, not really. Maybe hints in the dry down, but. Hmm. It doesn't overwhelm anything to me. Like, if I were to spray this blind and somebody asked me to write down what you smell, oud would never have come up. Yeah, I, I'd say like darker dry woods, but I wouldn't necessarily say specifically oud. No, I can't really say that. Um, to me, and like the first time I smelled this was with you at the boutique um, about 10 months ago, maybe. And if you remember, I flipped my lid. That's right, because we both thought it smelled like burning or burnt barbecue smoky meat. Yeah. And I no longer get that anymore. I very minutely do as, yeah. Because we both kind of like 
freaked out at how outrageous it was. And yeah. To me, it's. I bought my bottle at that time, and now when I smell it, I don't get that outrageousness anymore. Yeah. Um, Is it, I find it much more wearable now. I don't know. Again, maybe it's taste. Maybe it's our nose, but. I don't find it nearly as outrageous. I find it much more wearable because that was kind of my quandary before was, you know, I was like, I love this. This smells amazing. This is what I love in perfume, but I'm never going to wear it. When am I ever going to want to smell like barbecued meat? Well, you've worn some more outrageous things in Rose the Creek. I have, but I think for the price point of this one, I want something that's, you know, more wearable that I can enjoy, right. you know, wear maybe to more formal outings or whatever, but like... You know, if I go somewhere that's, like, a nice event, like, you know, who the hell's burning barbecue ribs or whatever. Right, right, right. It might smoky, be kind of... But I'm totally over rose. that. Like, I find this actually quite palatable, quite wearable now. Yeah, I, I find a nice green stem in the mid. Do you get greenness? Yeah, I do. With a little bit of fruit notes. And it kind of reminds me of some of the other Guerlain roses. Uh, and I'm not saying they smell anything like, but they have similar nuances to both Nahima, which has yeah. got a little bit of greeny, I agree. soapy... Um, fruitiness I think to it's it. kind of a dark black rose but it is you know it does have soapy clean elements but Nahima the the, the rose in the opening of that is just to me like black like, wow yeah I love it I think it's something different but yeah I can definitely see similarities to that rose bar bar I can pick up similarities yes. to now with both the patchouli and the fruitiness yeah although there's there's no oak moss in here like Rose Bar Bar claims to be a Shifra. I'm, mm. I'm not getting any of that. But I'm not saying they smell like at all, but there are some nuance, similar nuances yeah. to the other roses, which are both fantastic. Yeah. Um, performance? Nuclear. Atomic. Off, off the charts. Yeah, like, like, you know, 1 to 10, you know, I'd put it up, you know, 8 or 9. Yeah, I... It projects pretty well for me for the first three hours, and yeah. then three to six, it's it's still very good. And then you know six hours and, and over, um, it, it comes closer to the skin on me, but it just com never really goes away. I get a lot of musk in the base, um, like granny musk, and mm. the patchouli and rose are still they're still there. They don't re really ever go away. Yeah, would you agree? Musk in the base. I can't say I've gotten into it that far and paid attention that closely okay. i've only honestly i've only ever worn this like properly worn it maybe about three times in the last week um i've tested it and tested it and tested it but in terms of, like actually wearing it on myself and wearing it out um i can't really say much about musk in the base or much about the base other than kind of dry woods right but um to me this is about patchouli and rose I would say more about rose now than before. If you would ask me like eight months ago, I'd have been like, this is like pure burnt patchouli. You know, kind of like the um, Lalabo Patchouli 24, which also gets compared to barbecue. Barbecue, meat. right, smoky. And that's the kind of smoky patchouli, smoky uh, dry patchouli. But to me, it's kind of completely changed. To me, this is more about rose now than patchouli. See, I get very, uh, patchouli is a very dominant to me. Um, Almost like a velour de roses. Patchouli. Okay. But obviously much denser and thicker, like Lardisson's very light and minimal right. and transparent. Right, right, right. Um, very sour. I find the patchouli on here goes really sour on yes. my skin. It's not a sour perfume, but the patchouli has a sour element. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It does get very sour. Like, I find it to get very sour very early as well. Like, even just within the first couple minutes. I think it... I think uh, rose can be quite sour as well. So you get like rose that can be sour and patchouli that can be sour. And, you know, they just go, the the, the sourness just, you know, uh, is exacerbated. It's just, you know, really strong to me. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but uh, it's really unique. I, I Even though I do find it more wearable and everything, I still find this to be outrageously unique. And the only things I can really truly compare it to are other things slightly smell like it from Guerlain. That's about it. Yeah. I, hmm. I don't think the, the, the line doesn't really have a Guerlainade to it. Like, no. Everything else. They, they are very unique um, mm -hmm. amongst the Guerlain line and every other rose perfume. Yeah. Um, Mention as well, I think this is... Uh, uh, 
oil based as it's Middle Eastern yeah, no, fragrance no or uh, marketed fragrance, so they don't use alcohol. Um, so yeah, that is quite different. Uh, and I notice that as well. Like even some of the Guerlains you get, you do get a little whiff of alcohol in the opening, which is kind of off putting. But yeah, that this, might be more the designer range. I don't really get much alcohol or synthetics in the exclusive. There's a few that I can, you know, think of here and there that will have a little bit of alcohol in the opening. Nothing dramatic, nothing like, you know, a $50 designer, but um, this I get no trace of it. This is just straight in, straight into the top notes. So personally speaking, love, like, hate? I love it. Um, maybe it's just not as bold and outrageous as it was to me last year maybe because i've just tried so many more new things but i still love it i still think it is a class act yeah i, I would honestly put this in like my top five guerlain ever really yeah i love it i i that's kind of where we differ we both love guerlain but i think you're more of a classic guerlain guy i'm more of like the modern strange right, hard right. to uh, I approach i still kind of enjoy my exclusives but after getting to spend some time with this I thought I loved it. To me, it's it's now kind of in between like a lot and love. Really? Yeah, I, I, I feel like there's something missing in this perfume. I, I don't get, like, where I, when I wear Sange, I get inspired. I want to go and save the world. I want to do things I've never done before. I feel this is missing something to it, and I can't quite put my finger on it. See, that's funny because I'm kind of the opposite. To me, this speaks to me a lot more than Sange. Like, I've tried Sange numerous times, and I like it, but when I wear it, it doesn't just make me go, wow. But when I put this on, even today, even just like 10 minutes ago, or, you know, 10 minutes before the video, I put it on, I was like, wow, that's Nacree. So, yeah, I'm kind of, I, I don't know, to me, this is, I, for me, by far my favorite from the Desert series, um, and I would say it's easily like in my top of the exclusive. The only non-exclusive that can really rival this are like Nahima and Lord Blois. Yeah, I think my favorite rose from all of Guerlain is Rose Barbar. Um, really? Wow. Nahima is, is absolutely stunning. It's yeah. just not, it's not an everyday perfume. No, no. You know, it's, it's an X-rate. It's it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, rose Nacre. I think I find much more versatile, much more wearable. A, a, a lot of rose, just like Nacre, you know. Okay, so Barbar, Nahima, x straight Nacre. What's number one, two, three? Subjectively, how would I to rate you, them? right now. To me, I would say Barbar, Nahima, Nacre. But really? okay. subjectively, obviously, Nahima's the absolute best from the yeah. three. Um, not, I shouldn't say best, but I think the best crafted, yeah. best made, you know. It is a Very, much higher price point. That's the thing. Do you want to wear an yeah. X trade every day yeah. or over ten dollars per me, mil? To, <laughs> to me, you know, it's a very special perfume. Birthdays, dinners, yeah. you know, maybe on the occasional Sunday, a special event. Sure, sure. You know, even this is quite pricey, but it might be a little bit more wearable. You get, yeah, than, it's more wearable. It's Hima. a bigger volume. You know, I really enjoy. It. One thing I I do wish that. I don't know. I don't know why they put the stopper and the sprayer. I I don't know. It's kind of weird why you would. The get... stopper ends up being a cap for the sprayer. Oh, there you go. Fair ultimately, enough. just falls off anyway. Oh well, then back again. But whatever. Um, yeah, I love this. I really like this, and this was like probably. I picked up two bottles today at the Guerlain sale. This was con high contention for number three, and I ended up getting Bois d'Armini, just because it's going to diversify my collection a bit more. Right. A lot of the stuff I wear is strange, strong, heavy, dense stuff. So I just kind of wanted something different. If I had a bit more sweet or gourmand in my collection, which I really don't, I probably would have grabbed this today. You're also looking from the desserts collection. Yeah. All Sans Mythique Dorian. I love that. In fact, I would say if the performance was better on All Sans Mythique, that would be my favorite of all three. But I just consistently get really crummy... Uh, performance like after an hour I cannot smell I'd say it. it's a little bit less than this but I wouldn't say it's so bad man I wore it to bed the other night just like laying in bed to watch TV before I went to sleep and I put it on and like literally like 45 minutes before I went to sleep I had a couple sprays on my chest and then one on my arm for 
monitoring. Uh, and then when I went to sleep, like 45 minutes after that, like I was like bellowing my undershirt and I couldn't smell anything. And I was like sticking my nose to my arm just to pick up the faint, airy, flinty traces of Alsace Mythique. Yeah. I love it. I think it's just like out of this world, but it doesn't last. So to me, this is the king of the three. Worthy of the Guerlain exclusivity? Oh, absolutely. No question. No question. Everything. Bottle, juice, uh, presentation, everything I think is exceptional. Okay, well, there you go. Rose and the Cree. Let us know what you think. Have you tried it? Which is your favorite from the desserts to Orient? Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. And we'll see you guys again. Thanks for watching.